JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, Portland prisoner escapes while being treated at hospital. The Port Antonio police have launched a manhunt for Mark McNeil, otherwise called Bunny, of Vane Road, Port Antonio, who escaped police custody on Sunday. Reports are that about 4 a.m., McNeil evaded officers while he was being treated at the Port Antonio hospital. He was in custody for housebreaking and larceny. The police are appealing to anyone with information on the whereabouts of McNeil to contact the Port Antonio Criminal Investigations Branch at 876-993-3183. The police 119 emergency number, crime stopper 311 or the nearest police station. Meanwhile, the police are reminding members of the public that it is a criminal offense to harbor fugitives. Linstead man chased, shot dead. The community of Linstead in St. Catherine has recorded another murder. Gunmen on Wednesday night killed 27-year-old O'Shane Harper, better known as Lance, a construction worker of Rodney Hall Road in Linstead. The incident happened at Burton District. Reports from the Spanish Home Police saw that about 8.30 p.m., Harper was sitting at a shop when a Tida motor car drove up and its occupants opened gunfire at him. Harper ran and was chased by the men who continued firing at him, hitting him to the upper body. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigations continue, the police said. Harper is at least the second person murdered in Linstead since the start of the year, and at least a third within less than a month. On January 6, gunmen shot and killed another man, 27-year-old Denton Hamilton, better known as One Left, at 4th Street in Linstead. He was gunned down a day after he was released from police custody. The cops said they arrested and charged him with aggravated robbery. Police seek driver of a white Toyota vehicle involved in a fatal hit and run in Moko. Investigators in Clarendon are seeking the public's assistance to track down the driver of a white Toyota motor vehicle that mowed down a pedestrian in the Moko area of the parish on Wednesday night. 61-year-old farmer, Roderick Bartley, otherwise called Ginger Man, was killed in a suspected hit-and-run incident in Moko. Reports from the Moko police are that about 8.15 p.m., Bartley was crossing the Bowens Gate Main Road when he was hit by a Toyota motor vehicle that did not stop. He was again hit by a motorcycle, which also crashed, injuring the driver. The police were summoned, and upon the arrival, Bartley and the injured motorcyclists were found on the scene. Both were taken to hospital, where Bartley was pronounced dead and the motorcyclist was treated and released. The police are asking the driver of the white Toyota motor vehicle to report to the nearest police station or anyone who may have information on Wednesday night's fatal collision to contact the police immediately. Crash claims life of 23-year-old man. A man died as a result of injuries he received in an accident along the Sedge Pond main road in Clarendon on Friday. He has been identified as 23-year-old Jordan Lewis of a Water Lane address. Reports from the Exeter Police saw that about 6 o'clock Friday evening. The driver of a Toyota motor car was traveling towards racecourse. When on reaching a section of the roadway, he allegedly drove into the path of Lewis's motorcycle, causing the collision. The police were alerted and Lewis was taken to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. Boyfriend of aunt charged with murder of her nephew. The police are reporting that Tajay Hall has been charged with the murder of Dante Gordon. Hall, 23, and 22-year-old Gordon were involved in a family feud in Church Pen on January 5, 2022, which saw both men sustaining injuries. Gordon, however, succumbed while Hall was treated under police guard and released in custody of the state. Initial reports from the police stated that both men were embroiled in a tussle after Hall had intervened in a dispute between Gordon and his aunt, Janice Livingston, who the former is intimately involved with. Family members separated the men, after which Livingston and Hall went into their room. Moments later, Gordon returned with a knife and attacked Hall. Hall, the report stated further, was stabbed twice by Gordon before he managed to wrestle the weapon from his attacker and stabbed him once in the abdomen. This proved fatal in the end as Gordon died undergoing treatment. But in what seems to be self-defense in Hall's case, it's now being treated as murder based on new information gathered by detectives. The police would not say much except that based on additional information garnered, there is sufficient proof that the aunt's boyfriend should be charged with murder. It's a war we'll win, Chang tells gangsters as Zozo is declared for Westmoreland. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang 
says the displacement that will be caused by the latest Zone of Special Operations Zozo that was declared for sections of Savlamar, Westmoreland on Sunday, will send criminals scoring like rats from their holes. He has also promised that the war against criminality, in particular violent gang warfare that leads to murders, is a war the government will win. Chang made the comments Sunday morning at a Jamaica House media briefing where he appeared with Prime Minister Andrew Holness and the country's security chief saw the announcement of a Zozo for sections of Savlamar, Westmoreland. The under pressure security minister noted that statistics to date indicate that homicides are moving ahead of 2021 figures with three parishes and four divisions accounting for the majority of the increase. Westmoreland, St. James and St. Catherine North and the South. Chang also noted that Westmoreland, which recorded 128 murders last year, had the highest percentage increase in homicides in 2021 when compared with 2020. They have shown in this area an increased propensity for severe violence, designed to kill, maim and inspire fear, he stated. The minister sought to assure that the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF was taking decisive action to not only curb this rising crime, but to also restore public safety. He said curfews, cordons and searches, additional officers deployed to the Geographic Division and specialized units to apprehend perpetrators have been sent to Westmoreland. There has been some success, but more will be done, he promised. Chang said Sunday's declaration for Zozo is yet another tool to focus on the most violent district in the urban center of Westmoreland. It will not only restore order in the limited geographic area, it's designed to disrupt, to some extent, the gangs that operate in the area. He added that dispersion of the gangsters is not necessarily welcome, but dispersing them from the areas in the clear face of the Zozo will have them like rats scoring from their holes where they are easier to identify and apprehend. The security minister assured that the officers of the JCF and the Jamaica Defence Force are on alert. The JCF, supported by the JDF, with the support of the entire government, is moving aggressively to attack the criminal elements on all fronts. We'll examine what other law enforcement tools can be brought to bear on this issue in the era of Zozo, said Chang. He told the media briefing that the government recognizes that it is in a war with heartless and violent criminals, but will not relent. It's a war we'll win, he declared. Cops foil hundreds of attempts at murder each year. Jamaica's already frightening murder figures of more than 1,400 last year could have skyrocketed closer to 2,000 had it not been for the efforts of the police in intercepting nearly 400 attempts at committing homicides. Head of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Major General Anthony Anderson, has disclosed. In an interview on Friday, Anderson said investigators within the force are not able to be as efficient as is necessary due to the high volume of murders unfolding daily and as a result are focused on thwarting homicides. That is just our reality. So what we have to do, our technique is to make sure that we have fewer murders. So through intelligence, we interrupt about 300 plus attempted murders a year. Each year, three to 400 murders are interrupted, high threes to low fours every year, said Anderson. On the flip side, the Commissioner of Police said for the murders that are committed, the police face an uphill task of securing evidence for conviction. He said while the intelligence network of the force is widespread, the difficulty rests with turning intelligence into evidence. This, he said, requires forensic and first-person affidavit, the latter increasingly critical to the country's legal system, but gangs continue to intimidate and silence those capable of aiding lawmen. He said the strategy now rests with displacing these gangsters, ridding them of the means and the support. Make no mistake about it. The reason why these guys are behind bars, the reason we know who to go for is because of intelligence. The evidential bit is a little more challenging. Just the sheer volume creates a little difficulty for our detectives, the top cop said. Pointing to a 5 to 1 ratio in terms of investigators to a murder case in other jurisdictions, Anderson said the reality for local investigators is in stark contrast. In one instance, Anderson said a corporal from St. James had amassed 26 murder cases in 2017. The year Jamaica had recorded more than 1,600 murders, though he had managed to clear up 50%. He's a high performer. The challenge is if you get a case today, tomorrow you'll get another case. You cannot be efficient or as efficient as you'd like, said Anderson. The commissioner said too that the police are contending with criminal elements that have migrated and are heavy players in murder for higher deals. He said that several of the more than 60 murders committed since the start of the year are as a result of higher, though a significant number is gang-related. 
On the surface of it, it may look like a robbery, but it is not because nothing is taken. When you see that sort of thing, if you can't find the grudge immediately, there's some reason why somebody has had somebody else to do this, he said, adding that 92% of the killings this year are gun-related. Record high 1,968 new COVID cases in Jamaica, eight more deaths. The Minister of Health and Wellness has reported a record high of 1,968 new COVID-19 cases on Saturday, January 15, bringing the infection total to 112,218. The new cases comprise 1,135 females and 833 males with ages ranging from 9 days to 95 years. The cases were recorded in St. James, 534, St. Catherine, 386, St. Anne, 293, Kingston and St. Andrew, 271, St. Elizabeth, 78, Hanover and Trelawney, 76 each, Westmoreland, 74, St. Thomas, 64, Clarendon, 41, Manchester, 39, Portland, 20, and St. Mary, 16. In the meantime, eight deaths were reported, bringing the total to 2,530. According to the Ministry of Health, these occurred between September 1, 2021, and January 13, 2022. The deceased include a one-year-old female from Manchester, an 89-year-old male, and a 77-year-old male from St. Anne a 57-year-old male, a 43-year-old female, a 49-year-old female, a 65-year-old male, and a 78-year-old female all from St. Catherine. There were 96 recoveries in the last 24 hours, bringing the total to 67,142. Currently, 446 people are hospitalized, 41 of which are severely ill, while 7 are critically ill, and 87 are moderately ill. There are currently 13,696 confirmed active cases on the island. The health ministry has reported a positivity rate of 31.7%. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.